Welcome back everyone to another ESO build video. Today is the update to the Nature's Bounty tank build for the High Isle chapter. This is a tank with a twist. So, generally speaking, it is a tank in every sense of the word. It has lots of health, it can self-sustain and heal, it can block the big stuff and taunt the nasties and turn it away from the group. In the meantime, it can control things very, very well as well. But the extra part, you apply huge amounts of uptime on debuffs to make enemies hit well weaker basically you lessen their effectiveness you also apply almost 100 percent uptime and area of effect of minor brittle given that crit damage to your group and also if you're capable of stacking stuff not only have you got so much control it's stupid but you also blow stuff up for free yes you pin stuff you hold it still and it goes boom you don't have to apply any special DPS rotations or anything. It just works by default by the way it's designed. So if you haven't seen this before, you're going to see something completely new. If you have seen this before, you're in for a surprise because a couple of changes. Anyway, we're going to go into the stats first of all, then we'll get into the juicy stuff. So first things first, we are on 23.7k max Magicka. Yes, you can enhance that if you really want to by applying a different um set up to your glyphs and such but we are also putting lots and lots of points into our health we're on 49 almost 50k health you can drop that down if you take some glyphs off and replace them with magical ones to put the bar in a better place if you prefer but you don't really have to your recovery should be covered speaking of which our recovery is 1k but just bear in mind we're using an ice staff and when you block you won't be able to regenerate your magicka so that will only account for your recovery when you are not blocking so don't worry, we've got other stats for that which will cover it. Resistance has fell off, good start. Try again. Now, one more thing to consider. We are, of course, capped resist on spell, but not quite on physical. If you get a minor resistance bonus in your group, that will actually cap you out, so you're in a good spot. We are using all of our points into health, and we're using the Mage Munderstone. Now, what you can do here is you can swap this around. You could have the Lord Munderstone instead to give you 2223 or 2225, I think um max health because we're not using any divines and then you can swap out your glyphs and then put that into magicka if you wanted to that's entirely up to you you can switch them around as much as you want but for the purpose of the video we've gone full health in all the glyphs and all the stats and then we've just taken the mage mundestone to give us the extra magicka on top we do have a lot of that with our race anyway but again it's, it's up to you our spell damage is not massively important but there will be a variation to that where we can get more spell damage but again that'll make more sense when we get to the gear which is basically coming up now. So we're going to go over to the armory system and I'm going to show you the two different variants to this build with this particular update. Now, the first one, we're going to go over the ulti build and variant. So we are using the Azurblight Ice Staff on the front and back. The back bar has got an infused magic glyph, which means that will constantly fire as long as our wall of elements is down. We'll come to that later, don't worry. Which will give us magic back all the time, even if we're blocking. Also, we're taking advantage of these poisons here, which will give us magic back per second over a six second period with a 10 second cooldown if we apply it via a light attack, a heavy attack or weapon skill. That is luck based, yes, but it is up quite a lot. If you don't need that, this can be changed, of course, um, into its more effective use, which is the increased weapon and spell damage. This is free recovery. If you've got it covered, take it off and you can take advantage of the glyph. If you have poisons on, it negates the glyph. So just bear that in mind. Use that for recovery. Take it off if you want the extra damage. Yes, you will get extra damage out of this. And yes, it will contribute to your group. Again, the choice is yours. If you don't want that, you can put on a crusher or a damage shield or anything you feel like changing it to. No need to argue about what glyphs you have. It's your choice. But that will contribute to the booms more. Anyway, the jewelry, of course, is a Zerblite as well because it's a medium set. And we've gone with infused with reduction to cooldown on potions by eight seconds. Twice. And the last one is healthy with reduction to cost for spells, for Magicka. These combined are done with this very unique setup, not with the other one. So this is important. This jewelry setup is important for this setup here where we're using Arcasis. Arcasis gives you health, armor, and health. And whenever you drink a potion while in combat, you and three other group members will gain 44 ultimate. And this has a 30 second cooldown. The way that our jewelry is set up, if you have medicinal use and all that good stuff, your potions will have a huge uptime anyway. Spoiler, you don't need medicinal use with this one. <laughs> this actual cooldown is no longer 45 seconds for us. It's actually 29. So what you need to do is pop a potion. And when this comes back, 
don't pop it right away. Wait for one second and then pop it again. We can use a potion every 30 seconds, which does help for our resources because we are using it 15 seconds quicker than everybody else would. We've got a 50% increase on our recovery bonuses, basically, by constantly popping these things. But you are going to need to buy loads of them or make loads of them. And you're going to have to make sure that you cover your champion point passives to make sure you take potions and sometimes get lucky enough not to consume them. Anyway, sturdy on everything except for the large pieces. So reinforced on the head then and the chest and everything else sturdy. You want to make sure, again, the weapons are infused on the back and charged on the front. Yes, you may have seen a video recently where I was showing you about ulti regen. Decisive was nice, but charged was better for the way this is set up. So again, a Zerblite on the weapons and jewelry with infused reduction to potion cooldown and reduction to cost with healthy. Sturdy on everything except for the large pieces. And then the helmet set, obviously the monster helmet, is barren. Now, I did make a video about this. You can go and watch it if you want. I'll put it in the description. But basically, this gives you three stats, which is quite nice. They're half stats. So you only get 500 or 600 of each rather than the 1K usually. But you've got all three. And then, every time you apply a status effect, a new one, on any target, same one, different one, doesn't matter. Every time you stack one status effect, you will get a stack. And it will stack up to three times. And if you hit three, then you will gain four ultimate. And then you'll have a one second cooldown and you can do it again. So basically, status, 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 have some ultimate. Wait one second, status, 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 have some ultimate, wait one second. That sounds like a long day. Sounds like possibly four seconds worth of ulti, one ulti a second. No, no, it's not. No. If you apply a new status effect, so you could apply chilled once a second if you wanted on one target. Or you could apply chilled and breach and defile all on the same target. That's three in one second, by the way. Or you could have a big ad pull and just constantly ping in status effects left, right, and center. Effectively, if you pay attention to the build and, and use it properly, you can actually get four ulti a second from this. That'll demonstrate again in a moment um, for the purpose of people that didn't watch the video or for the benefit of people that didn't watch the video. But again, that's in the description if you want to see a, a clearer version. I actually do a side-by-side -side comparison of with and without this setup. Now, what you've got to consider here is this is your ulti build and setup. You only have survivability within your skills. If you want more survival, you can go with the other setup, which is exactly the same. Same weapons, same choices. You can use poisons. You can use glyph on the back. It's all exactly the same. Monster set is the same. Traits are the same for all the armor. But the armor is leeching instead. Now, this will heal you once a second for each enemy caught in the poison that fires from this. It's air of effect, it will land on any target that hits you, and it will constantly, constantly, constantly tick. It can have 100% uptime, it's guaranteed to fire, and the heals scale off of the damage. So the more damage it does, the bigger the heal, the higher your heal and receive, the more you get back. On paper, it looks tiny, in reality, it's huge. And yes, multiple targets can get hit at the same time, which yes, means big, big chunks of health back. So these are the two options. Arcasis for massive ulti regen, which I would say is the optimal version of the build or leech in if you need more survivability bear in mind of course the jewelry needs to change if you're using leech in so you might want two sets of these the jewelry needs to be reduction to cost of magic or abilities and arcane on two of them and the same glyph on the last one but with healthy so healthy arcane arcane and if you've got the other setup you need to make sure it is infused infused and healthy the reason for that is this one is for the potion cooldown, so we can take advantage of this bonus here. Whereas this one is just carry on doing what you're doing, and we'll stick to our normal timers and get the cost down. Those are the two major setups, and I'm going to show you something rather dramatic. So basically, the ultimate that we want to take advantage of the most, we're skipping ahead a bit here, is Permafrost, or Warhorn if you prefer. Permafrost will protect your group. It will apply major protection to them, giving them 10% reduction to all damage they take, including yourself as well. It will slow down all the enemies and apply a chilled status effect, including the brittle bonus because we're using the Destro Staff. More on that later. Well, that's 200 ultimate and it lasts for 12 seconds. So it's going to take you a while to build that up. Not with this sub, it's not. So basically, all we need to do is apply as many status effects as possible to gather the ultimate regen from this. Keep up our basic lights and heavies and combat-based ultimate uh, regen and take advantage of our cases. So if I do this and I start a fight and put down my tanky stuff. And I just maintain this. I'll maintain a taunt or two. 
I'll apply my debuffs, and I'll keep them up. And that's it. Oh, don't forget your resistance buff, obviously. Now, as you can see, there is a timer in the top left-hand corner for how long we've been in combat for. If you're paying attention to that, you are literally watching me build 200 ulti in a space of 29 seconds. Actually, 28. I've just used the ultimate again. Now, if you keep watching, I'll keep reapplying my buffs, obviously. Keep my debuffs up. This will make more sense later. And again, we are pushing towards not far short of around 30 seconds, just generating ulti the whole time. It's very, very simple. And again, bang. Almost 27 seconds there for an ulti regen. And that's an expensive one too. That's nuts. It's a very high uptime on major protection for the whole group and a very high uptime on that chilled status effect, control, snare, maim, all that stuff. If you're using the other variant, instead of about 27 seconds or so, you're looking at about 40. So there's not much in it, but it can get quite dramatic if you're in a group situation because we've got major heroism coming if we take damage so it can go even faster. We can take all manner of different bonuses from the group. It can get really quick. The fastest in content that I've actually managed to generate ultimate from this is actually in less than 20 seconds. Now, how did that all work? Well, basically, Azure Blight has a bonus to it. If you deal damage with a damage over time effect, you will stack a bonus on each individual target. When they get to 20 stacks, it will go boom. Now, at the moment, that says it looks like 4.3k. You add your brutality or sorcery or whichever you're using. You add some extra weapon and spell damage, which we've actually got on the weapon itself. And then you start getting buffs and bonuses from your group. That goes stupid. No, we're not built as a DPS, but yes, that can go in excess of somewhere around sort of 15 to 20k per explosion. And this is per target. Every single one of those dummies over there can have their own bomb on them and they can all blow up and they can all hit each other. This also has a cooldown of two seconds per explosion per target but it also stacks with your group your group and your yourself using this set don't count as two separate azure blights they don't count as 20 and 20 they count as whoever's doing ticks add to the 20 so if you do have someone else in the group with this on them that makes a massive massive difference because it accelerates if you have more than three it's overkill because you're going to outplay the cooldown as far as your ticks are concerned Two is usually just about right. Anyway, we're going to get into the skills and start making more sense of this so you can understand how it all works. We are not applying lots of damage as a tank with our tanky skills, but they are all damage over time and they do all make that go boom. So, Betty Netch, of course, is the first ability. Animal Companions, fourth ability to unlock, so you are going to want these to start with. Basically, start as Betty Netch, morph it to Blue Betty. This will give you almost 5,000 extra magicka back over 25 seconds and it will give you major brutality and sorcery increasing your weapon and spell damage as you saw earlier that was like 5.4.3 uh, now as you can see it's already 5.2 it gets more and more and more dramatic the more buffs you have anyway um it also cleanses once every five seconds removing one negative effect so you've got a free magic regeneration skill free major brutality and sorcery and a free cleanse on tap this skill does not cost did I say it enough? It's free. And yes, you can reactivate it at any time for free to restart the timer. Don't let it bloody run out. Arctic Blast. This did get altered a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. Third ability you unlock in the Winter's Embrace skill line starts off as Wind. Morph it to Blast. This will heal you initially and give you a heal over five seconds. So technically you could spam it, but don't. It's expensive. And uh, also it does scale off your max health. So the higher your health, the stronger this will be. So that includes... Um, things like Ebon or even your own minor toughness from your passives. Those things stack up to make this stronger. And yes, of course, it can crit. Now, while this is active, it does damage and error of effect every one second, which is a damage over time. Every target caught by this per second will contribute towards your Azure Blight stick, uh, stacks. And also, after the five ticks have gone off, as long as an enemy has been hit by all five, they will be stunned for three seconds. So great control, good heal, and very, very nice damage over time. The damage, again, is not massive. It's not huge on purpose, but it will contribute towards those explosions. Every tick counts. Frost Clench, very simple. Destruction Staff skill line, third ability you unlock, starts off as destructive. Touch, morph it to destructive. Clench. Why did I emphasize that? Clench is the ability morph you need because this is a taunt if you're holding an ice staff. 
If you are not holding an ice staff, it is not a taunt. If you pick the other morph, it is not a taunt. You have to have this one. This will automatically, on activation, apply a chilled status effect, allowing you to apply minor maim to the target. That's what chilled does. That is a 5% reduction to damage from that target. They will hit less. At the same time, it can also immobilize the target for 5 seconds. And it will also apply major maim for 5 seconds, reducing the damage they do by 10%. So you got a 5% and a 10% mitigation bonus, basically for you and the whole group, effectively, because that target now hits less. The chilled status effect is very important. Any chilled status effect contributes towards your Baron stacks. Any status effect at all, in fact. Also, that means that chilled, while applying minor maim, has a side effect. If you're using a destruction staff and it is ice, and you apply a chilled status effect while holding an ice staff, as long as you're on the right bar for it, which we are, because we've got two, that will apply minor brittle. Minor brittle will allow you to damage the target um, with an extra bonus. You will do 10% more critical damage as a group on that target for the whole duration of that buff persists, which is four seconds. If you can reapply chilled over and over and over, then of course you've got minor bristle on tap. Well, we are full of ice, we are full of chilled, and we're going to do that all day long. Yes, usually people would have to spam this, which you shouldn't spam because it's a taunt. You only use it once every 15 or 14 seconds or so. Don't let it run out, but you can overlap it. You don't need to spam this though, because all the rest of our skills are doing the work. So maintain that. Do not lose aggro no matter what. You have one job as a tank. Don't fuck it up. Just do not drop that taunt. But the rest of it combined will actually do the rest of the work for you. You'll have chilled up all day long. This does come with it. It's very, very nice. If you want the major maim at a certain point, reapply the taunt, you'll get it straight away. Anyway, stress out the way. It's very, very frustrating to have to over explain that the taunt is the one thing the group wants you to do over everything else, but it happens all the time. If you're guilty of it, don't worry. Just practice it so it doesn't happen again. Anyway, Razor Caltrops is next. So I said status effects. This is major breach which reduces the target's resistances so the group can do more damage, and so can you. But because it's physical damage, it can, if you're lucky, apply minor breach, which this does a lot because we've got a charged weapon. We can apply that a lot more than most. That contributes to our Baron stacks as well and also makes the group do more damage. You don't have to have this, however, if you don't want to. If you want to swap out for something else, you could, of course, change it to the ranged taunt, which I would apply the stamina version, not the magical version, to manage your resources better. And that will give you a longer ranged taunt versus the 15 meter one you've got here. You can mix and match them depending on your range. But one more thing to consider, although someone might have Caltrops in the group already, just remember you're the one with the status effect bonuses because you will then apply more ulti to yourself or gain more ulti. But at the same time, this does physical damage over time. So you can contribute more to your Reserve Blight stacks. So here, loads of ticks. Here, loads of ticks. With the Taunt, not so much. Now, this Shimmer and Shield here is stupid. You only use this in emergencies, but remember when I told you the ulti regen stuff? Well, this gets worse. Crystallize Shield to start with. Morph with the Shimmer and Shield. If you activate it, which is expensive, for six seconds, you absorb up to three projectiles that hit you up to a maximum damage of 73k so that's bonkers and each time you absorb a projectile you actually get back uh, nearly 750 magicka per hit which is nice for our resources even if you're blocking and you gain major heroism for six seconds giving you three ulti every 1.5 seconds so when you saw us um get 27 seconds worth of ulti building to fire off our ultimate that is now dramatically reduced if you maintain this and take damage from projectiles it's bonkers now the main ultimate you have seen it already basically you activate this gives the group major protection reducing the damage they take they have to be in the circle by the way lasts for 12 seconds does damage and error of effect applies chilled status constantly and slows everything down massive control massive protection don't leave home without it expansive frost cloak is nice and easy winter's embrace skill line first ability to unlock starts off as frost cloak morph it to expansive frost cloak 36 meter radius that's massive yes that is 72 meter diameter you are giving the entire group a major resolve resistance buff you and them physical and spell don't let it run out it's insane 
uh, blockade of frost. This is important. Destruction staff skill line. Second ability to unlock. Unlock wall of elements. Morph it to elemental blockade. Not the explosive one. Blockade is fine. It lasts longer. It's better for your resources. And you just put it on the ground and it does ice damage. This will do ice damage every one second. And if the enemies inside of this are chilled, they will be immobilized inside of it. Now we've got immobilization in this. We've got stuns in this. We've got snares in this. We've got a massive snare on our ulti as well. We've got a really nice um, effect here to immobilize them if they get chilled. And they will. Then your control is just mental already. And it's going to get even better. The good thing is um, this does fire your back bar glyph on cooldown. Whenever it's ready, it will continuously fire as long as the skill is running, as long as you're hitting something with it. Again, this is damage over time. It's constant ice. It's constant chilled. It's constant immobilization. It's constant glyph firing. And it's constant damage over time. No, it's not massive. The ticks are not huge and they're not meant to be. They're just meant to be there. So that is three skills now, at least. Four if you count the ulti. Constantly ticking damage. That is four ticks per second at the moment. And it's going to get even better. Frost Pulsar. This is important. Last ability you unlock in this skill line starts off as uh, Impulse, morph it to Pulsar. If you activate this, you will do damage in area of effect in just one hit burst. It won't do a massive amount, but because it's the Ice variant, this does actually have an enhanced uh, status chance, which is really, really nice. And this does apply Minor Mangle regardless of your weapon. Minor Mangle will, of course, um, remove 10% of the enemy's health. It doesn't work on bosses or major elite targets, but the majority of other targets it does. So you hit them all with this, they've got less health, the group can kill it quicker. Also bear in mind, this does apply minor protection to you and your group. Doesn't last very long, but it does help. Now also what you have to consider is this. We've got more control. This is how you pull enemies in. This is in the Winter's Embrace skill line. Last ability you unlock starts off as Frozen Gate, more for to Frozen Device. Put this where you want in the room, where you think an enemy is going to be, or you know an enemy is going to be, or where one already is. If you put it under their feet, this will pull it to you. It will stand by you. It will be stunned out or mobilized even, and it will also apply Major Maim to it. You can see here we've got Major Maim on this skill. We've got Major Maim on our Taunt as well. That's a lot of Major Maim from a character that doesn't have a set applying it. You can put three of these down at any one time, so you can pre-plan them like this. You can put one there, you know someone's going to spawn there and one there. And any that land in it will be pulled to you and the device will disappear. Nice and easy. Yes, if you're very effective with your pre-planning, you can make this really, really slick. But if you can't maintain it and you're not very good at it and you don't have any interest in practicing it, you will lose all those benefits. But you can swap out for Silver Leash instead which is in the Fighter's Guild skill line. Just morph Silver Bolts to Silver Leash. It will cost stamina, so watch your resources because we've got no way to get stamina back apart from recovery, but you can pull them in with that instead. Personal preference, use the device. It's much, much better, but it's up to you. Now, more control. Last ability here, Gripping Shards. Very simple. This is in the Winter's Embrace skill line again. Starts off as Impaling Shards, morph it to Gripping Shards. The damage of this does scale off of your max health, so the higher the health, the better. But also, so does the Chilled status effect. The higher your health, the higher the chance to apply Chilled. That does stack with our Charged Weapon and our Champion Points. So this here is damage over time and high chance for Chilled. This is damage over time and could apply Chilled. This can apply Chilled with damage over time. This is just damage over time in general and can apply minor breach and this is chill damage over time regardless so you've got one two three four five damage over time air of effect abilities going on which means five stacks per second which means every four seconds you will fire off an azure blight explosion if you have another person in your group who is also utilizing azure blight all they need to do is bring a couple of dots and that will put that to the point where it's almost one second bang, two second cooldown. It gets really, really messy. Look up the off balance build on my channel or cleave. Either one of those two matched up with the nature's bounty build basically means you've got full control of the entire room and everything explodes. And for those trialers out there, if you want to mix two really effective tanks together, nature's bounty and lazy tank are nuts together. Anyway, keep these down to pin the targets this is an immobilization skill this is your main pin this is your help 
to apply status and your explosions and still pin the targets. This is your pull. This is your debuff. All you need to do is keep those up. This is for your health and stun. Again, more control. This is your taunt. So tank skills. Let's go over them again really quickly. Resource management. Debuff and ticks for damage over time for your explosion. Protection and ulti regen. Taunt. Pin. Pull. Debuff. Immobilize. All of those are tank toolkit skills. You don't need a rotation because there's no such thing as a rotation on a tank. You just have to be active, pay attention to the fight, and keep up your buffs and bonuses. And for doing that, this will happen. Keep the stuff on the ground. And make sure you maintain taunts. And things blow up. Nice and simple. If something's going to run out, reapply it. And carry on. It's really, really easy to apply. And for free, you're constantly generating ultimate because our status effect is huge. That's it. Now, if you were going to play solo, by the way, this is a tank. Remember that. You're not supposed to do a lot of damage. But you can if you stack stuff. If you do play solo, then you swap this for Crushing Shock. That way you can range attack stuff and you can range interrupt if you morph that skill. Change it to Crushing Shock. Happy days. Job done. Yes, you could do Maelstrom and Vatran with it. It's going to be a bit slower than your regular DPS, but it can still be done. And that's not a guess. That's been done on stream. Now, passives, the important stuff. Oh, one more thing, by the way. Wall of Elements does actually apply a damage shield to you and your group for projectile damage. So if you put that on and you have this on at the same time, your projectile reduction to damage is insane. I know earlier that said 73, but I told you it's based off of max health. We're getting to that passive when it comes to the, uh, the healing skill line. Animal Companions. This is important. Anytime you end an Animal Companion skill, you heal. That includes this. So if it runs out, you heal. If you recast it, the last one ran out, you heal. Spam it, you heal lots of times. Easy. Activating this ability once every eight seconds at least will give you four ultimate for free, because it's a free skill. This increases your magicka and stamina uh, recovery just for being on your bar. And this will increase the damage done by 2% per skill on your bar. We have one. Is it necessary? No. If you've got the skill, skill point spare, why not? We are doing damage after all. Green tree, the healing stuff. Green balance. When you heal yourself or an ally under 40% health with a green balance ability, we're not. You will gain major mend in increasing your healing done. We're not using any. You can put the trees on if you want. Stick it on your back bar instead of warhorn. You'll be able to fire that all day long with this build because it's only 90 ultimate. It will give you ultimate back as well if the people healed are low health. So that is an option. So if you do decide to put this on, make sure that you get this passive. But if you don't, then it's not the end of the world. You don't have to. Uh, when healing an ally with a green balance ability, you gain magicka or stamina, whichever resource pool is lower. This can affect it once every second. So the ticks of heal from that ulti will give you back your stamina bar because that one's the lowest one. Uh, this increases your healing done for abilities being on that bar. We don't have any unless you have the ulti, in which case it's 2%. Uh, when you activate a heal on yourself or an ally, you grant minor toughness. That is why this looks different. 73k, activate a heal on myself. 79k. Your max health will increase the strength of these abilities. And the same with this as well. Bigger heal. Winter's Embrace is very important. Increase the chance of applying chill to enemies with Winter's Embrace abilities. Yes, that does apply to this. It does apply to this technically, although that does that anyway. And it does apply to this as well. Also to this because it does do frost damage when they come in. You've got so much chilled status effect and you're using two ice staves, which means you've got major brittle all day long. Really easy. Frozen armor, every ability on this bar with that skill line will give you 500 resistance to physical and spell. Same goes for the back bar as well. We've got the same on both bars, so we keep the same bonus both ways. You can swap this around and put things in different places if you really want to, but it's really not necessary. Uh, reduce the effectiveness of snares applied to you. You slow everyone else down, but you're not slow at all. And increases your magic and frost damage by 10%. That's not massively important for us because although we're doing damage, it's not important that we're doing it. It's important that the ticks count towards the explosion. That's where the damage really comes from. The skills themselves are relatively weak. But it all does count eventually, so why not? Destruction stuff. Very important stuff. 
if you heavy attack with an ice staff, you will gain a damage shield, which literally is scaled off of your health. Again, max that health out. Put some food on as well because we ran out. And then you can see that this is actually stronger. It was 9k. Now it's 12. Heavy attack to get your resources back. You will need to because you can't recover your magicka while blocking with an ice staff if you have this passive. Uh, your destruction staff abilities ignore 10% of the enemy's spell resistance. Not massively important, but we'll take it for free damage. Increases your chance to apply status effects while holding a destruction staff. We're holding one on both bars. Passive is with us 100% of the time. So we've got higher chilled with Winter's Embrace. Higher status effect no matter what with this. And higher status effect, effect with um, the destruction staff uh, trait. So we've got charge on the front one. Stay on the front one as much as possible. You will get chilled and brittle all day. Also, while equipped, you will actually take less damage while blocking. And reduces the amount it will cost you to block. You do block with the magical bar, by the way. And when you kill an enemy with a destruction staff ability, you restore magicka. And when you absorb damage using the destruction staff shield, you restore 1800 magicka as well. And this can happen once every 10 seconds, though. So if you do heavy attack and get a damage shield, then you've got 10 seconds until the next one will give you magic back for free as well. So heavy attacking is very, very beneficial in lots of areas. Now, we are using nothing but heavy. So you want all these passives. Increases resistances. Increases recovery if you get hit. Um, and health recovery just for having them there anyway. Also increases your max health and increases your resource return from heavy attacks and your healing received. Fighters Guild, we're not using any passives for whatsoever, but if you did use Silver Leash, you could technically put it on the front bar if you didn't want to use Caltrops, and you could take advantage of getting ultimate for kills, but other people are going to kill stuff before you. You will get some though, but it's up to you. Generally speaking, this is not on the build, but if you wanted to change it, you can. Get Undaunted, you've got to get these passives. Every synergy you take will give you resources back. And of course, you get an extra bonus for having different types of armor. We are only using one type, but we still get one type of bonus regardless. Assault and support are not that important for us because we're not really using any. Apart from Caltrops, there's no passives there. We are a Breton. Yeah, didn't see that one coming, did you? 2k max Magicka. We're using Magicka as our main resource bar and our blocking bar. Need the extra pool. This will give you spell resistance, but it will double if you are affected by a chilled burn or concussion uh, status effect and we've got extra recovery all the time anyway so if your block is down happy days and above all seven percent reduction to cost for all magic skills alongside the reduction to cost for our glyphs that we're using and if you are using the potion cooldown setup constant constant reusing of potions will keep our magic up as well so cheaper cost higher resources back happy days we're in a good spot there most people struggle when they're ice tanking because they're used to high magical recovery to utilize the skills while blocking with the stand bar. We're still using lots of magicka utility skills, but we're also using the magicka bar to block with. So effectively, if you play as a stamina DPS, all your stuff is in your stand bar. You're probably going to do this fairly well, actually. You're probably used to maintaining one bar. But if you're not used to that, you've got to plug the gap somewhere. So we've taken the reduction to cost and the bigger pull. Medicinal use is incredibly important. This will make your potion cooldown um, really, really effective because your potions will last as long as the cooldown. However, if you're using the Arcasis setup, you don't need this because you beat it anyway. Now, you can be any race you want. You can be a Nord, but just watch your resistances because they'll be quite high. And you can be any other race you like, but this was chosen for a very good reason. If you don't have it, that's fine. But just bear in mind, you might have to adapt a little bit. Now... Uh, champion points. Easy peasy. These are all passives. These yellowy ones are all passives. Get them when you can. There's no rush. But you do want to make sure you get your major slottables. So technically speaking, just come straight over to here and unlock this at 10 points. And then come down to here and get this at 10 points. That way you've unlocked everything you need tree-wise. So this tree over here is for damage. If you did want to increase your damage, you can mess with Bite and Aura and swap it out for something else. But we're not going that way at the moment. You are, however, going to want along the way to get these status effect bonuses. They do help. Now, in here, you want to make sure you've got Ironclad. And out here, you want to make sure you've got Duelist Rebuff and Bulwark and Arcane Supremacy. This doesn't require any prerequisites. This one does. 
you must have at least 50 points in here or here to unlock this. It's a pain in the ass. Yes, I know. Actually, in fact, you can get away with this by going to half of that, I believe. Let's double check that because it is altered slightly. I think we can still use it. You can. Okay, so just half of this and you'll be fine and unlock this. So 10 points in there. Get ironclad. Get Duelist rebuff. 25 points here or here to unlock this. This will give you your extra resistances that you're missing. If you're a Nord, you don't need this. Just stack one of these. This is for your extra Magicka. It does help. But if you find that you are really tough and you want to do an extra bit of damage, you can take off a couple of these resistance bonuses, mainly Duelist rebuff and ironclad, and you can stack stuff like this. A Cult Overload will give you more damage if you blow stuff up, although that's not always going to work in your favor. This will, though. This is just a damage boost flat out. Really, really handy stuff. Most important thing is to pick four slotables and then move on. You will unlock them all eventually. Anyway, your passives are only important as you level. They're not massively important right away. Get your four slotables, slot them, and then just pace it. Put your points in as you get them. Green tree is not massively important. These you can all get over time. This one does help with your end chance, obviously, because you don't have to worry about charging them up so often. But I would recommend these four green ones for everyday use. This one is for uh, higher quality items of loot from chests. This one makes you faster between fights, so out of combat. This one will make your food last longer, and this one's very important, especially if you're potion popping like mad. This will give you a 10% chance to not even consume the potion or poison when you use it. So that saves you a few pots. And the red tree, very simple. These don't require any prerequisites at all. So get this, this, and this. Health, armor, and recovery. And then you have 10 point, no, 15 points into here. 10 points into here, 10 into here. Or you can finish that because it's got a nice health bonus. And then get this. Basically the same as my DPS builds. Siphoning spells. 1.5k magic back every time you kill something. You're making explosions happen. You will get kills and it will fill your block bar. Really handy. That's basically it for champion points. Um, there's not much else to explain. That is pretty much it. Keep your resistance up. Keep your betty up. And don't let your taunt drop. Taunt must be maintained at all times. It's as simple as that. You're a tank. Now, while doing that, don't let it run out. I've seen people run it down to zero. No, don't do that. Overlap it. While doing that, all you need to do is maintain this debuff on the targets for breach so your group does more damage. Maintain this on the ground so they are slowed and snared and immobilized. Same goes for this as well. Yes, they stack. They help each other out. And that's pretty much it. If you want to stun them, fire this off or heal from it. If you want to reflect or absorb projectiles, fire this. And you just maintain those skills. And for doing it for free, just for doing your tanky stuff like we showed you earlier. Just for doing tanky stuff. Watch. It's going to go boom, boom. How cool is that? Free damage. Beautiful. Um, now it's time for the important stuff. It's time for fashion. However, we didn't put down... The, uh, the fashion thingy. So we need to make sure we're finishing combat whenever it's ready. Yep, whenever you're ready. And then we need to place it. He was already dressed earlier, but we didn't put the friggin' um, station down on the ground. So you want to go for this. This is on PTS, by the way, so that's why these are free-ish. That's a cloven station. That's the wrong one. Don't do that. That's what we want. So now it's time for fashion. Let's see. We are using the same as before, actually. This is already on the website. But we're using the Wayward Guardian Helmet in medium. Wayward Guardian Chest in heavy. Silk and Ring heavy shoulders. Worm Cult heavy hands. Wayward Guardian Belt in heavy. Wayward Guardian Legs in heavy. Can you see the theme here? No, because we broke it. Thorn Legion Feet in heavy. Ebon Shadow stuff, because we all know that's the best stuff. There's no best in ESO, but that's the best. And also, Wayward Guardian stuff on the back bar. The two colors we're using are quite simple. We are using Void Pitch, which is from Vatashran Hollows. Yes, you can even get that on normal. And the other, the bluish type color, is this one over here, which is in Nightblade's Indigo, which is from uh, Grand Nightblade Slayer in uh, PvP. So go kill loads of Nightblades and you'll unlock that. And that's about it. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. I understand that obviously some people have never seen this before. And there's lots of information out there confusing you or not confusing about what you should or should not do as a tank. This does tank stuff. And for free, things blow up. 
If you're a good tank, you'll see more explosions. If you're a bad tank, get more practice. Don't worry, it's all in the video. You can rewind it and even look at the written guide if you want. Thank you very much for watching. And if you are not subscribed, of course, please do hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, if you want to help support outside the channel, there are some links in the info section for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, the website zonogaming.com. You can find me on Twitch every day, but Wednesdays from 10 p.m. UK time. There's loads of other stuff. Just look at the description. There's some links for you. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.